to do with Najib. Not, none of these issues has got to do anything to do with him. You know, he has just taken over now. These issues were decided by hours before. Fair and enough, he but he is having to handle them right He has now. to handle it, but then how does he handle it? There are many ways of handling it, but there are ways where you handle it, some will say it's right, some will say it's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, if you look at uh, Sharita, there's been a target on this uh, energy issue. You can look at it. She's the women's wing leader, mm -hmm. and uh, she's been uh, elected to that position. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you are, there's a problem in the family where business is going on, mm -hmm. but she becomes a target because she's in the VN. Mm -hmm. And then now Najib becomes so a target. So you don't feel that she's a target because her contacts, her, the people within NFC were linked to her through familial ties? You see, when, when, you, say, when you say familial ties, you can look at nepotism and cronyism. Mm -hmm. People talk about nepotism and cronyism. Those days when Tun Mahadev was running this country, they say Mahadev is full of nepotism and cronyism. None of his children were involved in politics at that time. None of his actually close friends were involved in anything at that time. But today, if you look at the opposition, cronyism mm -hmm. and nepotism is rampant in all the component parties. Well, component opposition parties, they have nothing but they and their family running everything. So, what do they do? In order to attack, in order to... Uh, get back at the Barisa National, so they point out these kind of things. So Sarisa became one victim. But you look at opposition, every one of them, it is a family, not only family, not just the wife, children, in-laws, friends, and everybody is involved. But at the point, totally. as you can see, Tun Mahathir's children are involved. Now, 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 I still remember, I still remember in 1995, when one of the sons wanted to stand for election, I was in the room with Tun Mahathir and his wife, he said, no, as long as I'm there, my son will not be involved in politics. Which after he left, he, his son, his children got involved in politics only after he left. While he was in politics, none of his children were involved. In 1995, this son was, uh, could you say the name? One of the sons, I, son. I can't remember the name. I think he has got three sons, I can't remember the name. Okay. All right, and it seems we have a uh, couple of questions from our readers. Uh, the first one is from Melton Kais. So, um, how does uh, KVSC uh, Bakasa, which is seemingly a pro BNNGO, who wants Indians and Chinese out of Malaysia? I think uh, nobody wants Chinese and Indians out of Malaysia. I think this is something you create for yourself, you speak for yourself, you just put yourself in your mind that you don't want Chinese and Indians. Let me explain this very clearly, all those of you listening down there. You want the Chinese one, the Chinese school, Chinese education, and the Chinese one, uh, their language. If you have an MCA, AGM, it is spoken in Mandarin and so on. Similarly, if you have the Indians, they want their temples, they want their Tamil schools, they want everything. At the same time, they want the Skolak Abangsan to be converted to English language. Where does the Malay go? Hmm. Where does the Malay go and what does the Malay do? So obviously when the Chinese champion the Chinese issues, the Indian champion the Indian issues, the Malay have to champion the Malay issue. Mm -hmm. So it's fair. You want fair, but you want the Malays to just back off. Mm -hmm. And you Chinese and Indians, we, I want to champion Indians. Mm -hmm. And you want to champion Chinese. But what does the Malay go? They also have to champion themselves. Mm -hmm. So Prakasa is just another body, similar like so many Chinese bodies. You name it, there are what, the Chinese educationist group, and the Indians, there are so many NGOs. Every day you find, there are more racist groups in Chinese and Indians than in the Malay group. So are you saying that you are putting Pakasa on the same level as Dong Jia Song and Hindra? I am not putting anyone in the same level. I am saying everybody is fighting for some rights of their own community. Mm -hmm. And I think they have their right. It just seems that Pakasa has a more firebrand sort of Pakasa, you have uh, Ibrahim Ali who sometimes speaks without understanding the sentiments of others. Similarly, we have others in Chinese and Indian leaders who speak without the sentiments of the Malays as well. I think this is a country, if you look, I give you myself as an example. I am probably a second, third generation. I lived in an estate, I am born in an estate, I went to a Tamil school, I came back and lived in Squatter for 25 years, I could become a minister. I flew a plane, I worked as a steward in the, in the aircraft, I became a lawyer for 25 years, I still could be in politics, I still could help hundreds of people, not only me, you know, coming out of the poverty I am, I could still sit and help so many people in my life. And this is happening in Malaysia, mm -hmm. probably this cannot happen in your own country. 
So those of you, those of people who always feel uh, in this angle of racism, that is Chinese getting benefit, Indians get not getting benefit, or the Malays, I don't think we, you are still living in a very old-fashioned, uh, uh, I would say, Stone Age kind of a living. You know, you're not really looking at what's really practically happening daily. We want Indians want temples everywhere. We have churches in every uh, commercial building. So many things going on. You know, on the other hand, of course, you have mosque and the Malays got their religion and rights. Similarly, everybody is having their own rights. But it is who comes out and are you which way. So we got to understand this concept, you know. We are not understanding. We are not giving in. We only want people to give in to us. You, you are okay, English medium. Somebody was arguing with me on the flight to Penang the other day. They said, no, we need English medium, okay? When we say we will go English medium, are the Chinese willing to close down the Chinese school and Indians willing to close down the Tamil schools? I'm sure they are not. But you want all national schools to be English medium. So what happens to the Malay language in this country? Even Singapore has Malay as a national language. So are we far-sighted? Are we looking at everybody? Are we looking at all the people? Are we looking at all Malaysians? Are we looking at ourselves as a Malaysian? Mm -hmm. When I want something, I look at myself as an Indian. And I want people to decide something, I want them to decide as a Malaysian. Is it fair? Okay. It's not fair. Uh, some people might be of the opinion that the current PM government came up with all these reforms, like as I mentioned earlier, uh, after the uh, poor showing in the 2008 general elections, the uh, recent birthday protests and several political uncertainties, would you say the same? How again? I, I didn't get your point. Uh, okay, the idea here is that some people think that the BN came up with reforms after the poor showing at 2008 GE with their reduced majority, the Berset protests, and the political uncertainties. Would you say the same? All right. I think uh, it is fair to say that BN uh, have uh, buckled up or BN have decided to look into areas where they have neglected after the results of the 2008 election. Many people have been speaking up on many issues. Uh, I remember personally in 1996, I met Tun Mahathir and I told him, the Indians will be going to the streets if we don't look at the Indian issues. Mm -hmm. And Tun Mahathir said, well, we have uh, MIC to take care of it. Hopefully they can look at it. But I looked at a point where in the sense that when Indians will go to the streets, I was looking at Indians becoming more poor mm -hmm. and less opportunity and uh, they will be left out totally. And when you in mean going to the streets, time. you didn't mean as in Indra going to Yeah, the when I meant going to the streets, I didn't mean going to the streets like what Indra taking people to the streets. What mm -hmm. I meant was poverty, lack of opportunity in that sense. Mm -hmm. But ten years later you find something like Indra coming up and people going to the streets for other reasons. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what their calls were, mm -hmm. if you look at all their hundred things in their list, mm -hmm. ninety-nine of them I have already spoken, we have already brought up. Mm -hmm. Of course, minus the uh, suing the British government and the Queen to pay compensation. The rest of it we have spoken. Mm -hmm. But only that, until these people had to go to the streets, march and do something like that, whatever was spoken was not really heard. Mm -hmm. So, Pakistan National was thinking probably like, it's okay, everybody is happy, everybody is doing fine. As far as the Indian is concerned, uh, MIC is taking good care of them. I think they left it totally to MIC. Right. So people like parties like PPP were looked at, oh you're a multiracial party, you speak for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we cannot let you speak for Indians alone. Mm -hmm. So we have to be left out. Even uh, if you take Rakan for example, they were a multiracial party. Mm -hmm. uh, so they they had less probably to do in the development of the Chinese community. So you're saying that the BN government left it to certain parties to take care of That's those right. parties did not take care of those Correct. parties. Correct. I totally agree with that. It was the responsibility of the leaders who are representing certain parties in Barisa National before its alliance, after that Barisa National, it is their weakness, their lack of bringing out issues, their lack of being more forceful. Maybe they have spoken, maybe they have brought up, maybe they got some money piecemeal uh, solving a problem, but they didn't look at the overall picture of what needed to be done for the Indian community. Probably they didn't plan to fail, but they failed to plan. So they didn't have an idea what their vision is. They never had a vision. What should be 20 years time? What would the Indian youth will be 20 years time, 10 years time or 30 years time? Because everybody goes to Tamil school. Mm -hmm. Most of them went to Tamil school. So 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10 are dropouts in Tamil school. Mm -hmm. So you have a problem, social problem. Where do they go? Mm -hmm. Estates, 
you are chased out of the estates because uh, no longer owned by those uh, corporates before. Estates are owned by private individuals, private companies, local Malaysian companies who employ foreign workers, Bangladesh, Indonesian estates. So these Indian communities are forced out. Mm -hmm. So when they come to the town, mm -hmm. when they come to a certain town, what do they do? They got no housing, they build squatters. Mm -hmm. I'm a squatter, 25 years. So you build squatter and you live in a squatter. What is your opportunity? If you are a squatter and if your mind is still strong and if you have still strong, very strong parents, they will still send you to school and educate you. But you have weak parents, weak mind, you leave out your education. And once you leave out your education, you have nothing else to do. You have to go in the wrong way to what we call it Charimakan.